Hello everyone and welcome back to the Awkward Let's Play Dream Daddy with my daddy. I'm Matthew here with my daddy. Hey. D we took a slight break between episodes so I could use the bathroom and daddy could grab a quick snack. And now we're back to go fishing with Brian. And may I just say that all this talk about fish and salsa and burritos, I am hungry. <laughs> okay, we got one heart marked up. Let's do it. If the police are driving behind you, don't give them probable cause to pull you over. <laughs> that sounds like a proper That's death. a good one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Daisy and I are going and fishing tomorrow. Are you in? Oh, I have messed with Brian. Oh no, I've been dreading this day. I actually posted about my ability to fish in to Brian, and now he's challenging me to another dial. I've been doing my fishing research online, but I'm nowhere close to being an expert. Still though, I have to accept. I type back to Brian. Sounds great, man. Super excited to catch all those fish and my lawn could use another good mowing. That'll show him. Brian responds back, let me know that tomorrow he'll pick us up at an hour I previously forgotten existed. Man, that's gonna be a rough start. Amanda? Amanda comes into the room from the kitchen eating a cheese stick by biting it off piece by piece like some kind of monster. You know, the string cheese. Uh, I eat string cheese like that. <laughs> I didn't raise you like that. What? It's called string cheese, not chompy cheese for a reason, Amanda. Daddy, you shut up. Not everyone has time to string their cheese. Did you just call me to here to criticize our controversial string cheese eating technique or what? Remember that time that we actually had a bunch of string cheese just go bad and for some reason it tasted better after that? And <laughs> you and I just sat there eating string cheese all day? Yeah. Oh, that was a good day. Did you come in here to criticize our controversial string cheese eating technique or what? No, Amanda. You have to go fishing tomorrow. Well, you have to go fishing. I get to play with Brian's dog. How do I become a master of fishing overnight? You went fishing in the Girl Scouts, didn't you? Nope. My stint in the Scouts was brief and early transactional. Thought I could get free cookies, but I didn't know oh, that I had to, like, be outside and tie knots and stuff. Though, it was worth a try. But I have to be Brian! He's gonna make me mow his massive ass lawn! Dad, let me tell you a story. Do you remember last summer how I applied for a job at that coffee shop across town? Uh, give me a refresher. During the interview, they asked me if, if I knew how to work an espresso machine, and I really wanted a job, so I lied and said yes. On the first morning, there was a line out the door, and within half an hour, I severely burned my hand. They told me to come home and come back. I still have a scar from that. Of course I remember. What does that have to do with fishing? The burn is a metaphor, Dad. I don't get it. Mm. You can lead a horse to water. What do horses have to do with fish and burns? Mm. Dad, please. I don't get your obsession with competing against Brian. You wouldn't understand. It's a dad thing. Please try explaining it to me. Okay, Brian's just... He just thinks he's so much better than me, and he purposely reminds me of that whenever he can. It's like he has to one-up me. I have to beat him at his own game. Aww. Is that what you think is happening here? No, Amanda. Okay, good. I know that's what's happening. Alright, Pops. We should both be getting some sleep. See you in the morning? Night Panda. I brush my teeth and throw on some pajamas. I climb into bed, set my alarm, and close my eyes. Okay, sleep. I'm wide awake. I can't help but think about the last time I went fishing, hoping that there's something a gleam of it to give me an edge over Brian. I was about nine years old. My dad woke me up one morning and told me to get dressed and meet him downstairs. It was still dark out. I had no idea what was going on. But before I knew it, we were, we were alone on a freezing cold lake. I had to sit there for hours while it got hot and muggy, the air thick with bugs. I picked that mosquito bites while my dad sat in so stony silence, fishing pole in one hand and a beer in another. He didn't catch anything. On a long drive home, my father bought me a pack of cigarettes and, uh, and didn't say a thing. That didn't help, and I think I some repressed sadness about my father. I'll deal with that later. Oh god, are we edge daddy? 
I'm sitting on a boat in the middle of a body of water. I can't see any land, but I know it's a lake. The water is placid and still. I'm holding a fishing pole. I don't understand, but it feels like my life depends on catching fish right now. I catch my lure in the water and wait and wait and wait. My whole being is filled with hope, hopelessness as I watch the line disappear into the depths below. You used the wrong lure. I look up, up and see my father just how he looked that one morning, disapproving. I'm panicking. I pull the lure up and try to grab a different one. But all the lures in my attack box are the exact same. I look out to my father for guidance, but he's gone. I try casting again, but I can't hold my footing. Oh god, we're going in nightmare territory. Oh god, we have our past fishing memories and nightmares and... Oh god, why? Why? What is happening? It's fishing day. That would explain the weird dream. I groggily slim and I close and get ready. That was weird! <laughs> I had to say that was weird. I spot a man in this door half open and see her still curled up in a mountain of blankets. I'll get over to her bed. I give her a tiny kiss on the forehead. Fishing day, kiddo. You ready? <sighs> no. Well, you gotta get up. I can't do this without you. I'll stop sleeping in your clothes. Amanda pulls her comfort her over her head. Never. And, uh, I'll get up in a minute. All right, Brian should be here in 20, so you better not just go back to sleep. Amanda sticks her hand through the blanket to wave me away. I leave her in her room and make myself some coffee and another cup of lots of cream and sugar for Amanda whenever she gets up. Amanda eventually walks and chugs her coffee while I do word jumbles. I hear the doorbell ring. That must be Brian. Still rubbing our eyes, we walk over to see Brian. He's decked out in fishing gear. Daisy's falling asleep next to him. Early bird gets the worm, buddy. <laughs> you ready to fish? I was born ready. Do you see this beard? It is the fishing dad's beard. My eyes narrowing on Brian. I'm just amazed that they never have new clothes. Yeah, I think that's because limited budget. Oh. They can only get so much art. Well, it is from the Game Grump, so either it was... They didn't have enough funding, or it was just a stylistic choice. I mean, the Game Grumps, it was a stylistic choice that they would make fun of later, after skipping the tutorial. <laughs> you hear that, Aaron? I'm not trying to make fun of you, it's just, that is hilarious, and we all know it. Keep up the good word at work, Aaron. <laughs> it's a good day to die. Up in, guys, let's get this fishing party started. I'll walk over to the driver's side door and open it. Oh, we got Doggo! Yay, Doggo! <laughs> Can I see your license, sir? <laughs> Maxwell, let Daddy sit. Maxwell obediently hops into the back to crawl with Daisy. Raina sells an X to Maxwell and Daisy and immediately falls asleep. You ready for an adventure? I'm ready for glory. I sure will stay awake as we drive to the outskirts of town. Country music plays quietly from the radio as I watch trees pass by. So where exactly are we headed? This is about an hour north from here. A little spot I've been going to since I was a kid. My dad used to take me there all the time. I don't think anybody else knows about it. I brought everything we need so that we could catch some trout. I have a nice little fire and enjoy the nature. My, uh, my fishing pole is in the shop getting it tuned up. Do you maybe have an extra I could borrow? But of course! It's probably not as nice as it sounds like yours is though. Right. <laughs> I'm digging a hole here. A really deep hole. I'm staring at a lying in the highway. The sun's barely over the horizon, scattering dusty pink light over the trees. For a split second, I spot a deer grazing the side of the road before it leaps back into of the bush. After a nice quiet drive, Brian eventually tells me to pull off the highway and onto a dirt road. The car bumps along until we reach a clearing that opens up to a magnificent lake. Deer are not as graceful when you need to see them every night. <laughs> I just gotta point that out because I always see your deer on my way home from work. They're not as nice of a sight as people say. They're just they're just a health hazard. Yeah, especially when they jump in front of you. Thankfully, I've not had that happen yet, but I'm still waiting for that one day where it happens. Well, here we are. I step out out of the car and help Brian unload our gear as Maxwell runs around us barking. The kids wake up and wander to the shore where Daisy tries to teach Amanda how to skip rocks. Brian and I carry the tackle boxes and cool her down to the edge of the lake where he has a canoe waiting. 
Oh, great. It's still in one piece. Hold on. Help, help me out with that, Maxwell. Hail Brian plays a tiny dog-sized life vest on Maxwell. That is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your turn. Brian hands you a lime green life vest. Uh... If I fall in, I'm counting on you to rescue me. Shoot yourself! Brian turns to the man to Daisy, who are still skipping rocks. You kids want a fish? I go with just throwing rocks in the water. Amanda hurls a rock into the pond with gusto. Yeah, take that water! Savage! Amanda, you're supposed to be skipping them. Is that what we're doing? Daisy, don't you want fish? I think catching fish is kind of inhumane. Oh god, we got someone thinking that catching fish is inhumane? A bunny hugger. What are we going to eat? We need our meat. Look at Brian, he's a big guy, he needs his meat. We're going to explore in the woods and look at bugs and stuff. Alright, be safe, don't go too far. Brian puts the life vest around himself and we throw all of our equipment into the canoe. Maxwell happily jumps in and takes his place looking out over the front of the boat. I get into the canoe as Brian shoves off. We paddle together to get ourselves in the middle of the lake. Thankfully, you, I, thankfully, Daddy knows how to canoe. And I mean game daddy, not my daddy. Do you know how to canoe daddy? Yes, I do. All right. Uh, next to Grandma and Grandpa's house, you have a lake right by it, don't you? I would have a lake when I was growing up. Or was that next to... Oh, at their Florida house, yes. I know you have a lot of outdoors experience that I don't know about. <laughs> Most freshwater fish generally feed at dusk and dawn, which is why I had to get you up so early. Yeah, I know. That's pretty common fisherman knowledge after all. <laughs> fisherman knowledge that I'm knowledgeable about. Still a gambling man? You know it. Let's see if you can catch more fish. You can catch more than one? That was easy enough to me. What's on the line? Besides little fish I'm going to catch, obviously. I was thinking something a little more high stakes than mowing the lawn. Custody of our children? <laughs> more than that, let's say, if I win, I get your weed whacker. <laughs> the Wagmaster 2000! That's a limited edition! But, if you win, you get my pole saw. The region cut 3000. The cordless version? That's the one. Shit, the Region Cut 3000 is a state of art, but Weed Whacker is a prized possession, but those are hard to reach branches in the back of the yard that have been begging for a pruning. You're on. No, don't take the bet! I suddenly remember they don't know how to fish. My foolish, fatherly pride will one day be my undoing. Watch as Brian ties, lure, and does some stuff I can't quite follow with his fishing pole and casts it into the lake. Oh boy, now I have to do that. I start the tackle box and the pole in my hand. <laughs> Put some bait on the hook. Insult the fish. <laughs> Stretch me for physical activity. Let's let's try. I pull a worm from a styrofoam container Brian brought. It's slippery, but I think I get on the hook if I just focus. Oh god, I'm bleeding. Oh god, the blood's everywhere. The worm is not on the hook. Need some help? No, I meant to do that. The blood <laughs> attracts the fish. He's all up to my way, you know? I think that's sharks. No, it's definitely fish. You know what? Now what? <laughs> Before the fish made it call. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Uh, I want to perform the fish mating call, but uh, let's actually try. I take my pole and try to tie an elaborate looking knot to impress Brian. It's a classic hunter's bent. I learned that one in my youth. Yep, this one isn't coming apart anytime soon. With this knot, I cast my heavenly line into the unexpected water and, and deliver unto us a bountiful harvest. I look over to Brian. He doesn't seem to be paying attention. Let's cast this up. I pull my rod back and launch the lure as far as I can. And the lure flies off the line and sails far, far away, landing in the lake with a loud sploosh. Sorry, I, I just went not see wrong. This cold air drives the pressure down. Uh, go ahead and take my pole. I know it's 
Hard switching to a new pull you're not used to. I'll fix up another lure. Brian ends me his pull with a smile. I just sit there feeling like an idiot. Fishing around here is easily. They group up. All you gotta do is. Oh god, it's a puzzle game. All you gotta do is line up three of the same species and reel them in. I didn't even actually do the same species. Oh. Okay, so. Fishing. Fishing is long. Fishing is hard. Fishing is apparently Candy Crush? Okay. I mean, I guess on a certain other channel, me and Mikey just finished Hoonie, recording Hoonie Pop, but. Uh, okay. I need to catch three of the six. Need to match the same species. I can't exactly tell which is fish is which. There's three right there. I got one third. Right, right above the middle. Uh, I can barely see. Match of the day. Right there. Uh. Match of the day. Let's see. I'm sorry. I'm blind, Daddy. <laughs> now you're fishing, nice man. Now you're fishing. Uh, fishing is hard work. Um, uh, uh humming a humming a humming a. Now you're fishing, nice cat. Combo. Uh, all of that? Oh god, fish trivia. Nice catch. Now you're fishing. I, oh, this is hard stuff. I can barely tell them apart. It looks so identical. Catch of the day. Match of the day. Catch of the Whoa! Whoa, that was a combo. Okay, just let me, just let me do this. There we go. We're puzzling now. Uh, yeah. All my combos are gone. I get it, fish trivia. I have no idea what you're doing. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah! I was just matching fish, apparently. It's just a puzzle game. Uh, Didn't look like you were matching anything, though. Yeah, uh... Pretty much, for a while, I was just moving the fish so that once I got a combo, they would fall into another... Co an uh, to another match, so it would combo. Yeah. Standard puzzle game fair is basically, if you get a match that leads into another match, you get bonus points. Wow, this is way tougher than I thought. I look over at Brian, who's smiling and obviously enjoying his time out here on the lake. I will crush him. Suddenly, the fishing pole jumps in my hand. I reflexively tug upwards. I think I got something big! The tip of my pole, di bleh, the tip of my pole dips down repeatedly, and the line starts to run. Reel in! I finally get the fish right up next to the boat. It's a long, beautiful rainbow trout. Brian hands me a net. It's all yours. I lean down and notice my hands are shaking with excitement. This fish is bigger than all the ones Brian's caught. That pole saw is mine. Oh my! The entire canoe tips with me. I find myself sinking in the lake. I should have taken the life vest. Wait, I thought I did. <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm embraced under the water and pulled into Brian's dad arms. I finally dragged upwards, spiraling water as all of our gear floats the surface. Maxwell doggy paddles around us in circles, having a great time. You all right? Does that? Count as one. <laughs> well, seen as all of our fish are now safely back in the lake, I guess so. Brian laughs. Let's get you to shore. Brian and I flip the canoe back over, fill it with our now soaking wet gear. We row back to shore, Maxwell and tow. Once we get to the beach, Maxwell darts through the woods. Hey, there you go. A new outfit. We get to see those dead arms. Brian takes off his shirt. That's like, oh God, no, no, no. <laughs> Do not chipe up his body. I gotta get a fire set so we can dry off. Wanna hand me yours? 
I, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's not, let's not do this. <laughs> oh, God, that, <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, I read that real quick. Day's young, we can fish from the shore. Let's try and get some fire going, I sit to dry off my pants. We're probably gonna have to put the, what's a kibosh? Until another day. I stomach growl, we're gonna eat the dog. Oh, I'm fine. Brian reaches his cargo shorts and pours out a few granola bars. I'm a small child. I'm flush with snacks. Ah, granola. And now back to waiting. Where did the girls get off to? Shouldn't they be back by now? Oh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. They're a couple of smart kids capable of killing people. That's what I'm worried about. They're too smart. They've probably established a small rural government by this point and installed themselves as leaders. I take a look around at the thug crossing over the tree line. Ah, uh, nature. Ah, uh, nature. <laughs> Here you go, bud. Ryan hands me a bottle of bug spray. I begrudgingly take and douse myself. Uh, I've always hated how much how this stuff smells. Really? I always I liked it. Reminds me of being outside. Maybe you and I have different sentiments on the outdoors. I saw it come bounding up to me, a huge stick in his mouth. He drops at my feet and looks up at me expectantly. Oh god, another choice. Throw the stick towards the woods. Fake out throw. Break the stick in half to assert your do dominance. Uh, let's chuck it. Let's throw it in the water. <laughs> That's something we used to do with Shadow. Get him to swim. Work his fat butt. Which, consequently, is not very fast. It was very cute, though. Nice throw, Daddy. I turn away. Oh, God, no. No romance. I know what this game is, but God damn. Okay. It's time for pets. What's the plant? But pets never fail. Well. Rub that belly, scratching behind his ear. Hmm. But pets is for cats because you can jack up an entire car with that power. Hmm. Behind the ear? Ah, oh, that was okay. He really likes you. Be careful, he's gonna try to follow you home if you keep that up. I'm gonna steal your dog, Brian. Ah. <laughs> uh. While well, I'm playing with Maxwell, Fish begin routinely pulling on Ryan's lines. I watch Brian effortlessly fillet the fish, squeezing a bit of lemon on them and frying them up in a cast iron pan. Before we knew it, we have a feast fit for a couple of shirtless dudes. Mmm. <laughs> Demand a daisy merge from the woods, looking totally unscathed. Whoa, Dad Bod Patrol, I'm gonna have to issue you both a citation and demand you both put your shirts on. There are children present. I'm sorry, daughter, we're both so sexy. Brian tosses me my now dry shirt and I pull it over my head, thankful that I will no longer be destroyed by Brian and his rock hard packs. Where have you guys been? Studying entomology. Oh god, big words. What? We are playing with bugs. Hmm. I expected you guys to be covered with a little mud and stuff. Daisy looks offended. What do you take me for, a child? Ah, uh, you're ten. <laughs> Amanda puts a hand on Daisy's shoulder. Right. <laughs> they can see you around the fire, and Brian sure serves us all generous piles of fish on paper plates. It's absolutely delicious. Why does he have to be good at everything? I mean, look at that beard! Fish taste okay? Daisy and Amanda both nod furiously, mouths full of fish. It's incredible, I've never had fish this good. Yeah, it's great. Old Harding family recipe. Why are your pants wet? Well, Amanda, we were out on the lake and then, and I actually tipped out, and then I actually tipped over the boat. Don't worry, all the fish gear floated the surface, so we didn't lose anything, right, Daddy? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. I can't believe you just covered for me. Gosh, he even now humbles me. He's trying to beat me at everything, including my world famous sense of humility that you don't have because you're trying to beat this man in fishing, which you don't even know how to do. <laughs> we finish our ish and end up playing catch with Maxwell for a little while before we decide to head out. After cleaning up the camp, we pack the station wagon and let Maxwell in the back seat. The poor pup falls asleep in a cuddle pup with the man and Daisy. They've had a long day. Been an ordeal today, bud. Let me drive you guys home. I want to prove that I'm the most awake dad on the block, but, yeah, I'm beat. Fine. 
As we drive away, take one last look at Blake disappearing behind us and smile. I rest my head against the window and the low rumbles dirt rubbed and eat plus lulls me into a peaceful sleep. Why don't you just say that this is the same car interior as our car from before? Same exact background. A hey, sleepy head. Off of my eyes as I doze off in the car. Oh, excuse me. I self-consciously wipe a bit of drool off my chin. Oh, hey, I was resting my eyes. Uh, just in case you suddenly have to jump into any sort of conflict, so I'm super awake for it. I'm ready to fight with my strong arms. It's all good. You earned some rest, buddy. Thanks for coming out with us today. I had a lot of fun with you. Thanks for inviting us. I, I also had fun, actually. Glad to hear it. Take it easy, yeah? You too. Take it the easiest. <laughs> Brian chuckles to himself as he unloads the car. Amanda and I get inside and immediately collapse onto the couch. Long day. Yep. Well, it's so close to that pole saw. Pole saw? Yeah, Brian, I work for Keen to see who could catch the most fish in. Ugh, stop. Why do you care so much? Amanda Panel, just look at this guy. He's obviously got my number. He's rubbing my face in it. Dad, I love you, but you're kind of dumb sometimes. Dumb? Or clearly the superior dad. <laughs> you know what? I don't have the energy required to properly unpack your weird fixation with asserting your masculinity. I'm going to bed. Night. Anna slides off the couch and face down onto the floor. Um, I'm a tired slug. Amanda, that floor is disgusting. I don't care. <laughs> well, night honey. Night pops. I'm sorry, but while pirating games is a good tip, I don't think that would be a dad tip. Well, I guess maybe in this generation. Okay, got a pretty high score. Yes! I don't need to restart it! How do you ever fail? If you make the wrong choices, that's why you see me saving before one of those three choices. If you get multiple bad choices, you could lead yourself down a terrible path in which you probably break up a friendship permanently. Yes, friendship. But it's all make believe. Yeah. And with the power of my save and reset feature, <laughs> I have power beyond anything anyone has ever known. That's about ready to pack it in. And after a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. Why am Amanda still awake? That kid needs some sleep. As I pass the room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't quite make it out with what it is. Get a little closer. Is she crying? What did you do to my girl? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda! The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strained. She sniffles. Who did this to my daughter? I will crush them. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Uh, since this is Amanda, everything works out in the end, in the end thanks to video game logic, unlike the dad. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her space, and if that's the wrong choice, then she'll she'll recover to it in time. If I cut the room and close the door gently behind me, she immediately starts crying. Oh, that was probably a bad choice. Wow, I have no idea why I was so upset. She this is her like, mom. I feel awful just leaving her to cry. I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, I would have just made her more upset. I can't stop mentally cycling through the awful things she could be dealing with right now. Why than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. As a father should. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed, my bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Man, I should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever is bothering you. Her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle in the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything to going on at uh -huh. school today? No. Okay. From what I've seen of other people playing this game, this is the exact same thing that happens if you pressure her into talking to you. There's no right choice! Okay. Do you need to write to school? No. Want some coffee? Anna pulls the, to pulls the toaster lever up and takes her 
still freeze her burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it actually hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back on at the kitchen table and look at the picture of Amanda I have hanging on the wall. And I teach her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. Remember how determined she was. Remember how long it took me to get me to ride a bike? Like, I gave up and then someday I just randomly hopped on a bike and I somehow knew how to do it? Yeah, amazing, huh? Yeah. And now I can't even ride a bike properly anymore because of my knee injury, but... Thinking about it... I also injured my knee while riding the bike, and it's the exact same knee I've injured now. Huh. Though, so, it was nice while it lasted. <laughs> Your face is a mixture of excitement, pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knee, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. I took her for ice cream bit as like nothing had even happened. After giving me a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. I have an idea. Start rummaging around for ingredients. It's time for pie! I hear Anna walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for the room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin? What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I want to say sorry about last night. I was worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong. I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So, just... Whatever it is, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. She's pregnant? That, that would be very bad. <laughs> But whatever it is, I just want you to know that, that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Uh -huh. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language you both understand. I'll pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Only the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Cake! It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over and... Oh. It's beautiful. <laughs> It's strawberry. And it gives me a big old hug because of cake. The guys have plates of pork and serve us up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is this whole thing? I know it's been really weird lately and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. <laughs> I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Mm -hmm. I guess I should start from the top. Okay, so... Prepare for teenager problems. Got it. Ready. So you know Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. Just in case. Let's see. I know that's Amanda. So it's the best friend or the other one. I'm going to say the best friend. Yeah. Yay! My child thinks I'm cool. Anyways, ever since the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was on my head for a while. Then I found um, out from Rosie M. That both the Emmas, Grace, and Noah all went to a party at McKenzie's on night. But this is a long ass short. On the same night, they all told me they were going to be busy studying for Calc... What? AB. Calc AB final. I didn't take calculus. And I graduated college without it. <laughs> Yikes. Mm. So, another important piece of information is, uh... God, this is embarrassing. I don't know. There we go. There's the confession. And, uh, that's a thing. A thing that happened. I mean, you kind of had your suspicions, Daddy. You already asked about it. You're a bad liar. So are you! I learned from the worst! Oh, no. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush on was Emma R. She promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama. So I just kept, keep quiet and keep going about my business. And then one day I invite everybody out to get nauseous at the mall. And after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones out for like more than 60 seconds, 
they all, all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. We all know that feeling. <laughs> totally understandable. Aww. Like, I'm all anyway. And I get to the food court, and who do I see there? But Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah. All hanging out together and eating nachos. Without me. What? That is the biggest crime against nachos. And it gets better. You mean worse. And I'm saying by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. This is gossip. Uh, yeah, this is happening. Uh, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... Did this, she poop on the bed, too? I don't think we heard anything about... Yeah, I don't remember her. the bed. I'll say the gossipy gossip one. one. Nailed it! Oh. Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or, I guess that's me now. Anyway, nobody will say anything. I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say. I was very angry and really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left. Without nachos, I might add. Which only further contributed to this shitty day. And then immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one at MR asking how long the, how long the Noah things are going on. And Sorry, I know. Oh, that's a lot. Are you still following? I am... <laughs> You know this is taking a while when I save in the middle of it. And it, this isn't even an important choice. And I'm saving in the middle of it. I have no idea what is happening, honestly. You want to know what's going on? So I'm telling you. Sorry, I'll try harder. What happened next? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. Get a load of this! For anyone who played those old Sonic games. And R says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Anna pulls out her phone and reads, word for word, an artificially long string of text messages. Can you believe that? I can believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. Also, oh, but this is all beyond me, but I am trying my hardest to be supportive. Mm -hmm. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she's been being a really terrible friend, and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, and just stop being a friend. I was like, okay. And then she left me on red, and then... Wait, left me on red? What's that? Oh, it's like, she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know because there are, are read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just gonna nod and pretend I understand. I'm sure you understand that, Daddy. Oh, yeah, I understand all about it. I mean, you have phone business all the time, don't you? I never heard of a, I've heard of read receipts for emails, but not texts. Actually, yeah, you're right. I know it on Facebook, but I don't think it happens on text because that, at that point, it just gets creepy. Maybe they're just doing it over social media site. So while this is happening, I'm talking to uh, MMP about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable and venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then I know her, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that MFP sent me screenshots about everything and told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. All right, I think he lost me in the screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. Yeah, it is. And the bottom line is, everybody dropped me, half my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Shit. Man, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to say about this. I almost expected it from everybody else, but Emma R has been there since Mom died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even mad that she stayed. No, I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad that she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everybody just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. As mad as I am, everybody like, I miss them, Dad. Oh, boy. Oh. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know it's pretty dumb. Uh, I mean, it's teenager stuff, so... 
say, it's not dumb and hope that she feels better. Man, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad about yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've been, unless you're secret, you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Uh. I wouldn't know that because I skipped high school and even then I was homeschooled. Real friends don't do that. When you get older and you start realizing the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. Do you really want to surround yourself with people who do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure that out myself. I wish I had learned it sooner. If the other person is a point in the effort to show how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not behold old and to be to being their friend ultimately i think this is way more than their character yeah god i can barely read today ultimately i think this says way more about their character than it does about yours because you're amazing and if they can't see that well that's their problem i'll keep that in mind i'll look down at the table did we just eat that whole cake yes you did just eat that whole cake Nice. Nailed it! That sounds like something we would do, right, Daddy? Yeah. And we then we get another cake so that Mommy and Mikey could do it, too. <laughs> well, good talk. Anna gets up to go to her room. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops? Yes? Huh. Thank you. You are always welcome. Love you, Amanda. Love you, too, Love you too, Dad. Always bring a war chest. Is that a dad tip? Uh, no. Okay, we got past date two and event two, which means next time on Dream Daddy, we're going to do the hopefully the final date with Brian so I could finally free my daddy from the shackles of having to record with me. Yay. See you guys then. Bye-bye.